Hi, my name's Keith Cooper from North Light Images and this is one of a series of short videos looking at different aspects of the business side of photography. Uh, in this particular one, I'm going to look at how you learn new stuff. Um, as a photographer, um, I've been doing this now since 2003, I have seen massive changes in technology and in equipment, uh, basic photography equipment. Some of it's relatively unchanged in principle since film days, some of it's completely new. So what do I say about learning new stuff? Well it's something you need to do all the time. Experiment. Um, if you're a working photographer, if you're thinking of setting up a photography business, give yourself time to take time off and just enjoy taking some photos. Use that as a way of experimenting, learning, perfecting your techniques, such as I, my architectural photography. Um, I use tilt shift lenses a lot. Um, I got a tilt shift lens first time, second hand one years ago, and decided to just go out and learn how to use it. Well, yeah, I managed to do that. In fact, I've written a book about tilt shift lenses, which in some ways reflects some of my own journey in learning how to get the most out of them. And I still find new things to do with them and experiment and new applications of them in my photography. That's just one little technical aspect of it. Um, but the key to it is try and find stuff you enjoy. If you're doing photography that you don't really enjoy, and just earning a living from it well first of all congratulations for earning a living from it but do you really want to keep doing this if, if you've lost your sort of spark your interest in the subject um, is it perhaps a hint that you might want to do something else as well um, there's nothing wrong in doing photography as a business for a few years deciding well that was fun going back to doing a real job as some people would call it but you know, the main thing is that you've got to be prepared to learn stuff, whether it is, uh, in this example, um, I was experimenting with focus stacking. And uh, this is the closest I'm ever likely to get to owning a Ferrari. Um, it's one I was given as a, as a child by my grandmother. It's about that big. Um, and I've always liked it. Um, and it makes an ideal subject for uh, learning about focus stacking. Now I've, I've, this photo is from an article I wrote um, that's on the Northlight Images website. Uh, it's a series of articles. They're all about focus stacking and using something like a uh, software like Helicon Focus for doing different aspects of this, whether it be at this scale or whether it be for smaller macro stuff. And it's something I use quite a lot. Um, I started off experimenting with it, found some clients who were interested in this. Once they saw the results, it's built from that and now it's a steady part of the business. I don't do it every week, but when I do do it, I enjoy doing it. it makes a nice change. Um, so always think about when you're developing your business, um, how am I going to fit this in? Is this of use? But sometimes, yeah, just do it for the hell of it because you feel like it and that, that's worth doing. How do you learn new skills? Different people have different ways. Um, I, for years, resisted making videos for the North Light Images website because I personally find videos absolutely useless. Um, I dislike photography videos. Yeah, I'm aware of the irony of me saying this in a video, but it means find your own way of learning. Um, I don't learn things from videos, I read books. Um, probably why I've written a book and why I write articles. Um, I'm a photographer first, a writer second, a video maker, somewhat down the list. but. Whatever works for you, find ways of doing it. I would say if you're new to business, there are lots of books and there's tons of stuff on YouTube, if you can sit through it, um, that will give you guidance for different aspects of business. I would personally, and this goes back to my business experiences, uh, running businesses and doing different work before I took up photography, I'm always wary of business coaches. Um, it's just I've met so many of them at business networking meetings. They're often very nice people. Um, but do I want somebody to actually teach me uh, photography? 
it might work for you. You might find someone personally that you hit it off with. So look at things like mentoring and other stuff like that. It might work for you. But the key is always to try and find out what suits your own way of learning things. Um, as I say, I see uh, some of the courses and things offered and think, hmm, that looks a bit one size fits all. Uh, they tend to be for things like wedding photography, portrait photography, the kinds of photography that you can actually say, here is a workflow, here is how to get customers. Of course, you'll still need to actually be half decent at taking photographs, but it's about running a business. And that's always the key of it. Um, if you're looking for advancing your photography, don't forget to advance your business skills as well. Uh, being able to do presentations, talks to people, whatever it takes to actually get in front of people, get into their heads so when they need a photographer, they think of you. Um, you know, one other thing, and th this is a personal observation on photographers. Um, Organising photographers is like herding cats. Uh, they tend to be individuals. Um, are you somebody who wants to be part of something? Um, I know many photographers who don't. That's one of the reasons they do the job. Um, are the professional photography clubs of interest to you? Um, now, you do not need to be, certainly not in the UK, you do not need any professional affiliations or anything to be a professional photographer. You need to be able to provide photos to clients and you need clients that will pay, pay you for it. There's nothing else. It's a business. Your photographs are a product. Nothing more than that. Uh, you may put a lot of effort into them, but they're a product nonetheless. So think carefully if you're thinking of joining one of the professional organisations. What's in it for you? What are you really getting out of it? Uh, if what they offer meets your needs, competitions and the like, if you're into that, great. I'm not interested in competitions. Also, another thing, qualifications. Do you need qualifications to be a photographer? No, of course you don't. Now, I've got a couple of degrees, real ones from universities, that means I've got sorted letters I can put after my name and things like that. I never do. Um, I don't really bother with that sort of stuff. And I'm instantly suspicious, I'm afraid, and I'm sorry if you're one of the ones who do, of photographers who put a string of letters after their name. Um, th these letters, um, I'm going to say, don't impress clients one bit. However, if you do have a client that's impressed by it, by all means use it. Um, if I thought putting assorted letters after my name would help me get a particular bit of work, I might be tempted to do it. The only problem is I probably couldn't keep a straight face for very long if anyone asked me what they meant or why I was using them. It's up to you. It's about what works, but it's always part of your development as a photographer. Um, and let's say, I consider qualifications a complete and utter waste of time. It's about the photographs you take. Your opinions may differ, but the key point is know why they differ and know why they get, uh, get the benefit from it. If you come up to me and say, I'm a member of the association of, blah, of whatever uh, British, whatever, you know, some grand organization for photographers, I'll go, okay, you, you haven't impressed me yet just by being a member of it irrespective of how many people have sat and looked at your photos and go, oh, they're nice, or some more specific way of looking at it. I'm not impressed by that. I'm going to ask, what do you get out of it? Now, if you can answer me and give me a good set of things that you've got out of this that have benefited your business or benefited you personally in some significant way, then I'm okay with that. But don't come to me and say, well, you should be a member of a professional organisation. You should be this. Um, sorry, they just don't impress me. And it's probably because I have had a career of many years as an academic in academia, doing research and the like, where um, qualifications actually do mean something, although you're only really as good sometimes as your last published paper. But that's yeah, well away from photography, other than to say that you almost certainly don't need any formal education or photo you know, photography qualifications. They may be fun to do, but don't think they're automatically going to get your work. But remember that being a photographer 
is a personal thing for you. So what I've said here, I, I'm, I'm sorry if I've offended any members of August institutions for it, but um, I just don't think they ha really have that much of a place anymore. You may differ, uh, but have your reasons. So uh, I hope that's been of some interest. Um, thanks very much. And do join and subscribe to the channel, please. Um, it does help. Um, makes me make more videos like this and ones about actual photography stuff as well. Thanks.